I'll never meet anybody like Shaquille O'Neal, ever. With the first pick in the 1992 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic selects Shaquille O'Neal from Louisiana State University. One of the most dominant forces I ever seen play the game. Oh, hey, Speed, quickness, if Shaq didn't like you, man is possessed. he would make it his personal vendetta to destroy you. Save the women and children on that one. Here's Shaq. Oh! Couldn't nobody do nothing with Shaq. Nothing. You think you could have won that without Shaq? No, not at no. that time. I needed somebody like Shaq to help me. Shaquille O'Neal is the most dominant force I have ever seen in the history of basketball. Offensive rebound, couple of fakes. My lifetime, probably the most dominant basketball player I've ever seen. Portland has three timeouts left. The Lakers have two. Bryant to shot. What's up, guys? Mike here. And normally I have an intro, but this video has so many awesome stories that I don't want to talk too much here. Just if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. That's it. Here are seven stories that prove Shaquille O'Neal is not human. Number seven, a physical freak. To say that Shaq was a physical freak is an understatement to say the least. It has been said that his vertical leap measured anywhere from 36 to 42 inches. And there have even been rumors that in between his freshman and sophomore seasons of high school, Shaq had had one of the most incredible transformations I've ever heard of. Yes, the claim is that Shaq's vertical leap went from a mere 18 inches as a freshman to 42 inches as a sophomore. That is simply ridiculous, as his is at the time record-breaking max vertical reach. As during his pre-draft workouts, Shaq had a max vertical reach of 12 feet and 5 inches, which basically means that he was able to reach over 2 feet and 5 inches higher than the rim, aka he could almost touch the top top of the backboard. Keep in mind that even coming out of college, Shaq weighed in at 294 pounds and still he was able to both jump and run with some of the best guards in the NBA. And I'm sure you can agree just watching these clips, the man was a physical freak. Number six, a childhood prodigy. When you look at Shaquille O'Neal's life growing up, you can come to only one conclusion. The man was born to play basketball. At the age of just 10 years old, Shaq already stood at six foot four, and during a youth basketball game, he was so unstoppable that after he scored 30 out of his team's first 40 points, a father from the other team came and took his son off the court because he thought Shaq was closer to a grown man than a 10 year old. It has also been said that that father yelled, he's not 10, bullshit. If he's 10, he's gonna be the best big man in the world. To which Shaq's dad happily told Shaq, we're on our way, baby. And speaking of Shaq's father, he was in the military, which meant that Shaq had to move around a lot as a kid and often had to change schools. Now, early on when this happened, Shaq was bullied by bigger kids because everyone loves to bully the new kid, which meant Shaq eventually developed a new rule for new schools. On the first day at a new school, Shaq would go seek out the biggest bully in that school and proceed to beat him up in front of everyone to establish that nobody was going to pick on Shaq. This is not a joke and is kind of messed up, but it also makes sense when we look at Shaq's career as a whole. Shaq was someone who would never let any anyone mess with him, and it's crazy to think that being bullied as a child was a major reason why. Adding on to Shaq's tough demeanor was the way he was brought up as a kid on a military base. Because he was so tall, Shaq was often playing against grown military men and getting straight up bullied himself, but that only made him stronger to the point where when he reached Cole High School, no one on his actual team could guard him, which meant his coach had to recruit the school's 6 foot 6 geometry teacher, who himself actually held the record for most points in a single game for Cole to guard Shaq during practice and actually give him somewhat of a challenge. And before I continue guys, today's video is brought to you by the Flick Sports app and guess what? Hear me out here because Flick is giving away a $2,000 jackpot. And if you didn't know, Flick is free to download and is the ultimate app for diehard sports fans. It's a place where we can come together to chat, watch the game, make predictions, and compete in contests against each other. And guys, I'm super excited to announce that I am the host of the NBA All-Stars group. In that group on Flick, I'm going to be interacting with all of you guys and hosting NBA contests. And the first contest I'm hosting is for the Lakers Clippers game this Sunday, April 4th. There, I'm going to be challenging you guys to go head to head with me for a $2,000 jackpot. In that contest,
list, all of your correct predictions are going to give you points on my all-star leaderboard. And three of the people on that leaderboard are going to get an NBA jersey of their choice mailed out to them. Plus, they're going to be getting a shout out in one of my videos. So guys, what are you waiting for? Go click the link to Flick in my description right now. Download Flick and get your picks in so you can be a part of the $2,000 jackpot and the jersey giveaway. Trust me, guys, this is a no-brainer. Go download Flick. This is going to be awesome. Number five, the origin of breaking backboards. Speaking of Cole High School, I'm sure you guys all know about the broken backboards Shaq had throughout the course of his career. Here are some clips right now if you don't know about them. As we can see, they are amazing and add on to number seven, the fact that Shaq was a physical freak. With that said, because we're not trying to be basic because we're trying to dive into some more unknown stories here, let's talk about Shaq's high school days, aka the two games that would become the origin of the broken backboards. The first game came in a matchup where Shaq was dominating with finger rolls and his post game. Now you might think that because Shaq was a physical force that his dad would be happy he was expanding his game. That was not the case. This made Shaq's dad very, very angry and eventually his dad got fed up with Shaq's lack of killer demeanor and wanted him to dunk. And so as Shaq has said, quote, I had 45 one time in high school, three quarters left. I was playing against some little guys. I'm supposed to be dunking. I'm not dunking yet. So I lay it up, finger roll and miss. My dad walked onto the court. He's a drill sergeant. He said, yo man, call a timeout. I call a timeout. I go outside. He said, yo man, what you doing? I said, you know, I'm working on my Dr. J magic. Shit. Whoa, whop, he smacked me. Nah, it ain't no magic, Dr. J. You Shaq be a Shaq. After he punched me, I ain't crying, but I got a tear in my eye. I break the rim. I look back, he don't smile or nothing. Nah, he just looking at me like, yeah, you're supposed to do that. From then on, Shaq made it his mission to tear down any rim he could, and so that's why in a game against Southside High, the rim would take an absolute beating. Before this game, the refs actually told Cole's head coach that Southside had said, be ready for the biggest upset in Texas basketball history. To this, Shaq just nodded and then on the first play of the game, he dunked the ball so hard that he bent the rim slightly. The next time down the court, he dunked again and bent the rim even more. Then on the third play, Shaq went up and almost tore the rim down completely. As his head coach would say, quote, the rim looked like a roller coaster. This caused Shaq's teammate to actually go complain to his coaches that it was impossible to shoot at a rim like that, but his coaches would only shrug because they knew Southside would be shooting at that rim in the second half, so they didn't see a problem. And yes, Shaq's team won easily. Number four, the most dominant young center ever. To say that Shaq was dominant as a young center in the NBA would be one of the biggest understatements you could possibly make. Because to show you just how dominant Shaq was early in his career, we're going to look at just straight facts. Right away to start off his career, Shaq grabbed 18 rebounds in his first game, the most by a rookie in their first game since Bill Walton in 1974. After that game, Heat center Ronnie Seekley would say, quote, when he leaned on me, it was like a house falling on you. A quote that can certainly be seen as foreshadowing as from there, Shaq would historically finish his first week in the NBA as the first rookie to ever be named NBA player of the week in the first week of their career. Then fast forward to the end of his first season and a rookie Shaq would help lead the Magic to 20 more wins than the previous season. A staggering number when we consider that when it comes to players such as Hakeem, LeBron, Will, Oscar, Magic, and yes, Michael Jordan, Shaq tops the list of biggest win turnaround. Then came season number two, where a second year Shaq put up 29.3 points, 13.2 rebounds, and 2.9 blocks a game. He did this at the age of 21, and these numbers were truly historic. As we can see, Shaq is the only player in the history of the NBA to average 29 points, 13 rebounds, and two blocks per game at the age of 21 years or younger. And I know some of you might think this is an obscure stat, but let's take a step back because these numbers are actually so insane that if we drop down to 25 points, 11 rebounds and two blocks per game at that same age, Shaq is still the only player in NBA history to reach those numbers. We actually have to go all the way down to 24 points, 10 rebounds, and one block per game to even get two more names. And those names are Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns. Which means, to put this simply, young Shaq was not only untouched, but he has been so far unapproached. Number three, records on records. As is with the case of any all-time great, Shaquille O'Neal holds several distinct NBA 
NBA records. He has the most seasons averaging 27 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks with seven. The next two names on that list are Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bob McAdoo, who have just three. Shaq was also the youngest player to be named to the NBA's top 50 list that was created in 1996, just four seasons into his career. This to me is one of Shaq's most impressive feats because in just four seasons, the NBA had already determined that Shaq was a top 50 player ever. That is incredible. And moving on, Shaq also holds the record for most seasons leading the league in field goal percentage with 10. He has the NBA finals record for most points in a four game series with 145. You get the point here. Shaq did a lot. He set a lot of records, but I want to do something different. Number two, the matchups. Now I'll say the true measure of how great a player is, is how he compares to his peers. And when compared to the all time best centers during Shaq's era, Shaq tore through most of them with ease. Going from furthest to closest in terms of stats here, against defensive ace Dikembe Mutombo, Shaq more than held his own as he held the upper hand in everything other than blocks in the regular season, and then in the playoffs, Shaq outdid Dikembe in everything other than field goal percentage. Matched up against Alonzo Mourning, a Hall of Famer and the number two pick in the 92 draft to Shaq's number one pick, Shaq decimated Mourning in almost every category, especially wins. Next up, we have Patrick Ewing, a man Shaq averaged nearly 29, 12, and 3 against while shooting 10% better from the field. And then here we have a first, as David Robinson's Spurs teams did win more games against Shaq's teams in the regular season. However, it is clear that Shaq was statistically more dominant. Meanwhile, in the playoffs, things again are close in terms of wins, but when it comes to stats, this one isn't even close. Then we have Kevin Garnett, who I'm classifying as a power forward slash center. In the regular season, Shaq runs away with this one as his teams consistently beat Garnett's while Shaq outscored KG by about five points per game while also shooting much better from the field. The playoffs here were a closer affair, but overall, when you combine the regular season and playoffs, you have to give Shaq the edge here. As for our final three, first up, we have Yao Ming, who actually matched up very well with Shaq in the regular season. However, when it came to the playoffs, we can see Shaq has a clear edge, especially in wins. As for our final two, we have to give credit to Hakeem Olajuwon for sweeping Shaq's magic in the 1995 finals. However, Shaq did average 28 points, 12.5 rebounds, 6.3 assists, and 2.5 blocks on nearly 60% shooting in those finals. It's clear that guys like Nick Anderson, who averaged 40 minutes per game and shot 36% from the field, did not step up, but still, we're giving Hakeem credit for this sweep. That is why he's number two, as in the regular season, Shaq had more wins and better numbers, and then in the playoffs, with that NBA Finals included, yes, Shaq did have less wins, but he also had better numbers. Which brings us to finally, in my opinion, the one true even matchup of Shaq's career, and you might even decide to put an asterisk next to this because we have another power forward slash center here in Tim Duncan. Looking at these numbers in the regular season, we can see that both guys were about even and then in the playoffs, they are near even as well. A true testament to both men's greatness. Which brings us guys to number one, the unspoken what if. Now, most people don't really talk about this because of course Shaq is one of the best basketball players of all time, but Shaq himself has said that early on in his career, his number one sport was football and it was his dream to play in the NFL. As Shaq said, quote, I actually started out playing football. I was a hell of a tight end. As you know, I have wonderful hands. My hands are impeccable and I like to punish people. However, because of a knee injury, Shaq did give up football, and while that perhaps ended the career of one of the most dominant football players the world would have ever seen, because you heard that right, Shaq said he was a tight end. I don't know if he was actually going to play tight end in the NFL, but if he did, I don't know how anyone would have stopped him unless they injured him. I doubt he would have played tight end, though. I'm sure he would have played somewhere on the line. Shaq was not a dominant NFL player, but he did give us some hilarious high school football stories, because before Shaq fully made the decision to quit football, he showed up to tryouts and immediately caused tons of problems. The reason being, the team did not have any shoes that fit him pads that fit him or even shorts that fit him. Luckily for their budget, Shaq decided not to play, but because his best friends were on the football team, he decided to become a manager for the team, which has to make Shaq the biggest football manager in high school football history. And what's hilarious here is that oftentimes Shaq would roam the sidelines screaming during games and the other team would get legitimately afraid. They saw Shaq, they 
clearly saw that he was a huge, scary athlete, and they believe that Shaq may have been facing some sort of first half suspension, and that by the time the second half came around, they'd have to match up against a seven foot monster. Luckily for the health of every one of his opponents, again, Shaq never played, but just imagine what he would have done on the football field. That is a scary, scary thought. And there you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And also, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe for more basketball content just like this. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day, guys, and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. Make sure to click on one of them. Again, I know you're going to love it. And other than that, have a great day and peace.